And if you know anything about Costco, they make all their stuff in Japan and their stuff looks beautiful. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you what you get inside of the box with the Costco brand uh, strap bar, the hardware, and then we're gonna look at the installation process. After I install the bar, I'm gonna take the car out for a spin and see how well it performs after installation. So let me show you how we go from this plain looking engine bay to this awesome looking engine bay. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe by hitting the button down below to see more Corolla hatchback videos. I also have a lot more videos coming up where I review cool car tech that I find out there for car enthusiasts like yourself. And I put a link to the strut bar in the description as well. But enough with the talk, let's get this show started. The kit includes the main strut bar, two aluminum mounting brackets, hardware required for installation, and instructions in Japanese for how to install it. The straw bar bolts onto existing locations in the car. There is no need to modify anything and the installation is completely reversible. The straw bar is made out of a lightweight aluminum and the bar is actually hollow in the shape of an oval. This helps to keep the weight down while also adding a structural rigidity to the bar. The bar has a beautiful polished finish and right in the middle of the bar it displays the famous Costco logo followed by the much desired Made in Japan statement. I really like how the logo appears to almost float on top of the bar. It has somewhat of a 3D holographic finish to it. The welds on each end are of high quality and you can really appreciate the workmanship that went into crafting this bar. Each bracket has been custom made to fit the Toyota Corolla hatchback and is painted in the classic Costco blue which will add some flair to the engine bay. Some of the hardware included is anodized and some is zinc plated which will help to prevent corrosion. Moving to the installation, I'm gonna be working in these two areas. Starting on the passenger side, I'm gonna remove this plastic clip and pop this off. Then I'm going to free up this wire harness using this special tool which I have linked in the description below for you. Next, I'm going to remove the bolt that holds the coolant tank. Now I can slide the base into place. And then I reinstall the original bolt or the one that's provided in the Costco kit. Now notice the orientation of the hardware, first I have the split washer, then the washer, then an insert. This bolt is going to go on this corner right here. And here's the next bolt, again, here's the top washer, and the bottom has a nut. Okay, remove the nut, and slide the bolt into place. And now I can reinstall the nut. Everything right now is just finger tightened so I can still align the plates. The instructions do call out for the hardware to be tightened at this point, but I found it easier to leave everything loose at this point. Next is this metal portion. The nut goes towards the bottom. The flat portion goes towards the top. Now it's just a matter of getting that bolt to catch on onto the nut. Again, just finger tighten. Okay, now moving on to the driver's side, same thing. I remove the plastic plug and also free up the harness in the same way I did before and push this out of the way. Now there's one more harness that I'm going to have to remove, here we go, and I'm just going to slide this clip out of the way. Now I can install the plate by sliding it into its position, and I'm going to install the hardware. Again, notice the orientation, first I have a washer, followed by the nut. Okay, notice the orientation again, split washer, flat washer, and then an insert. This is going to go onto this corner right here. Okay, finally one more bolt, which has just a washer on the top and a nut on the bottom. Remove the nut, slide the bolt into place, and then just attach the nut. Everything's finger tight and steel. Alright, now this portion again, the nut goes towards the bottom, the flat goes towards the top, and I just have to turn the bolt until it catches on. There we go. Now before I remove these bolts to install the bar, I'm going to memorize the order of the hardware. Notice that I have, on starting on the left hand side, the nut, then a split washer, followed by a flat washer. 
then there's the center portion for the bar itself, and then a flat washer on the side that has the bolt head. This is on the passenger side. Now let's look at the driver's side. Same setup. You have a nut, we're starting on the right hand side, and then a split washer, followed by a flat washer. Then you have the center section where the bar is going to be installed, and then a flat washer underneath the bolt head. Now that I know the correct hardware sequence, I can remove this bolt so I can install the bar. Now that bolt bolts are removed, I can simply place the bar into its location. And here's the advantage of why I left the hardware loose. I can still move both of the bases so the bar will slide in very nice and easily. If I have bolted everything really tight, I might have to uh, struggle as I align it or force it into place. Now I'm reinstalling the hardware in the correct order and I'm doing it on both sides. Once the bar is installed, now I can finally torque down all these bolts. And the only advantage of tightening the hardware before installing the bar is that I'll have better access to all the bolts. Once the bar is installed, it's a little tighter, it's a little harder to get to the bolts, but not impossible. So I just find it easier to leave it loose and then tighten after installing the bar. Finally, I'm gonna torque the bolts to the spec as described in the instructions. Now it's just a matter of repeating the process for the driver's side. And notice as I'm tightening the bolt, I might have to hold on to this little bar on the bottom to keep it from moving. And then finally torquing it to the torque specified in the instruction manual. The last step is going to be to fully lock down the bar by tightening this nut and then torquing to the torque spec as specified in the Costco instruction manual. The installation kit did include two zip ties to secure both of the harnesses that I loosened up previously. Now would be a good time for me to reinstall the zip ties and secure the harnesses into place. Installation is now complete. Now time to take this bad boy out for a test drive. As with the straw bar, I think really makes a difference. It's not gonna make your car faster in a straight line. You won't feel absolutely no difference whatsoever. You're only gonna feel the difference when you're taking a turn, uh, particularly in a track environment when you're pushing the car to its limits. Now newer cars, the chassis is quite strong, has been uh, made quite rigid, so you won't see a dramatic difference as you would installing a straw bar on an older car. However, I think every car still can benefit from a straw bar like this car. I can definitely feel more confident when I have the straw bar installed. And here's the other thing too, a lot of this stuff comes down to how good you feel how comfortable do you feel with your car if you're afraid and you feel like your car feels like you're not in control you'll never be fast on the track so you want to be able to say that you, you, you feel inspired by the car and you feel like you are in control of the car and that's what the straw bar does it maintains the geometry of the suspension so when you turn in a certain direction the car will behave in the way you want it to behave without straw bars typically the suspension geometry can change in the middle of a turn and all of a sudden the car is going to do something that you don't expect it to do because all of a sudden the geometry is changing on you. <laughs> there was a charger on there. So I think this is a definitely good bolt-on for the money. You get quite a bit of performance and you also get the cool looks in the engine bay, especially in the Corolla. I think the Corolla, if you look at the engine bay, it came with no cover. At least mine came with no cover. Other Corolla owners that I've spoken to say that they did not get a cover with their car. So the engine bay looks kind of naked or, or kind of, it just doesn't look finish and I think the Costco straw bar really finishes finishes off the look of the engine bay that Costco blue color on the place stands out and that really super polished center bar 
it just looks very attractive. Now, another thing to point out is that they do have straw bars that are completely solid. And so it's one piece of a solid bar without no uh, joints. So for example, as you saw, this was made out of three pieces. Wow, this is a bumpy road right here. <laughs> uh, and because it's made out of several pieces, it allows the straw bar to flex a little. And also you'll notice that the straw bar was made out of aluminum but it was not fully rigid. It has a little bit of a flex to it. And that is what you want if you're looking for a good in-between between performance and also comfort. If you install a solid bar across from each strut bar, yeah, you were gonna, you're gonna get a lot of stiffness in the body and good geometry, but you're also gonna feel every single bump on the road because what hits the left tire will get transferred to the right tire. And same thing, when you hit something with the right tire, that impact gets transferred to the left tire. So both tires are now feeling a lot more of the road that you were before. You may not care, but if you're looking for a good balance in between comfort and performance, I like this design, so having a multiple piece stroke bar design. Well, that's it for this review, guys. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Hit the thumbs up if you found any of this video helpful. If you have any questions about the straw bar, please put that in the comments below. And I have a lot more Corolla videos coming up, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. See ya. This has always been one of my favorite turns. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Love feeling the, those Gs as you're turning.